So uh, just for our viewers, um, typically when they invest, they need to figure out how long it's going to take for them to get through the immigration process and then eventually get their capital returned to them. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, the ultimate attorney answer is it depends, right? I mean, we... Useful answer. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the actual realistic answer because there's no quick and easy out to this. It is a long process. We are in this together, all of us and our, your investors, our clients, we're in this together for a long time. Typically, I advise uh, clients that, look, you're going to expect to get your conditional green card anywhere in two to three years. Then you have to be on your conditional green card for two years. And only after that, when you file your eight to nine, are you even eligible to get your money back? Okay. So this all depends on USCIS processing. So typically that timeline, I would say, what, five to seven years? Yeah, I agree with you. Right. If you do it, you should expect a five to seven years. Five to seven years. Um, of course, that can never be guaranteed because we're dealing with USCIS processing. I see. And if, oh, you want to? Uh, one thing I would just interject there is because of these timelines and because they're uncertain, you know, by, by country, you know, depending on mm -hmm. where the person is physically, if they're concurrently filing from here in the United States or if they're overseas, you know, all of those variables go into uh, how long that timeline is going to be for a particular person. Because of that, as you, these guys know better than us, um, there, there has in the last several years been quite a bit of the of need to redeploy capital because the initial investment has run its full course prior to the investor being el eligible to receive their capital back. And one of the things that I worked hard on um, in this in this legislation um, was the provisions in the Integrity Act around redeployment, which really formalized how this works, um, which I think is a, I, I, I mention it here because I think it's a really important protection for investors uh, because under the previous regime, you know, this was something that, this was a policy that was sort of evolved out of necessity, um, but it was completely at the uh, discretion of the agency, oh. um, which I, is not where we want to be. <laughs> kind of terrifying. Kind of terrifying, right? uh, you know, so now there are guardrails around that, and people like me can plan for that ahead of time. You know, when we're when we're structuring investments, and investors can have some confidence in understanding. Okay, if I'm in that position, you know, here are the kind of the minimum you know standards for how, for what's going to happen. I think that's an important change that. Uh, under the new law. Yeah, and I think standards for rede redeployment and transparency with redeployment and, and your underwriting standard is extremely important. Um, it's a necessary evil, again, born out of like long processing times, right? So, you know, like we, we talk to our investors and our partners overseas and to an outside person, it rightfully sounds terrifying. Like, what do you mean you could roll my money over somewhere else, right? Um, what you find with a lot of what, we, what answer we don't like, though, is when projects or regional centers are kind of uh, hesitant to answer clearly what they plan to do, where they're going to roll the money over, what's the exit, is it rolling? If an investor gets eligible to, to be repaid back at different points, are they going to be able to get repaid faster versus like within a whole group, right? And not all regional centers, but there was a sizable number that didn't like to answer those questions, right? So I think transparency is extremely important. The other thing is being able to, again, who most regional centers or most developers, they might have a handful of projects, right? So it, it's, it's really hard to go through multiple real estate development cycles and be successful. So when you see if, if I would have more confidence in a situation where they've worked with only one type of asset class or they've, 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 they've funded and gone through several dozen life you know cycles of, of different projects then you would have a little bit more comfort that these people know what they're doing this is an area where um being uh, an investment management shop that has a, a broader um uh, sort of scope of strategy that doesn't only invest eb5 capital um, is an advantage for our eb5 investors uh, because it means that when we're in this scenario where some capital has to be redeployed, it doesn't have to be redeployed, for example, in another development project, right? Because there's really no 
need for the investor to take another round of construction risk because yeah. they've already created all the jobs they need with the first round of construction risk. Now, they might choose to do so if they liked the return associated with that investment, and we could give them that option. But we'll also you know, provide an option that is much lower risk, that's income oriented, so that we're not just automatically assuming that someone's going to want to do that. Right? That's all going to be up front. You know, when you when you come into the to the first partnership, it's going to be clear how that works. And I think that's important. Frankly, I think it should be the standard.